Ryan Blaney is one of the most popular of the newest NASCAR Youth Movement drivers. With a seat at Penske Racing's 12 Ford, Blaney has both had social and equipment leverage to put his personality and talent on full display. So, in the midst of his fifth full-time season as the Cup Series driver, has Blaney lived up to his potential? Let's look into it. Blaney started in the top three levels of NASCAR in 2012 with the Truck Series and Xfinity Series on part-time schedules. At 18 years old, Blaney showed his strength with a victory at Iowa. This led into 2013 and 2014, where he would run trucks full-time, scoring a win apiece in each season. The second of these seasons had him finishing runner-up to eventual champion Matt Crafton. This, along with getting one win in both 2013 and 2014 in the Xfinity Series, led him to getting starts for two cup races in 2014, and then a part-time deal in 2015. So the two starts he made in 2014 were in the number 12 Penske Ford at Kansas and Talladega. He finished 27th and 22nd. This would all lead into 2015, where Blaney started a part-time schedule with the Wood Brothers. There were some hits and many misses in this season with the Wood Brothers, as they had a bit of an attrition problem. Four of Blaney's five DNFs were attributed to engine failure. The top positive moment from this season, though, would be at Talladega, where Blaney would come home in the fourth position. This top five, and a top ten at Kansas, would help to be enough to bring this Penske affiliate up to full-time cup competition for the first time since 2007. Except... This time, they weren't using washed-up drivers who had peaked over a decade ago. They, instead, were with a driver who could be the next big thing in NASCAR. 2016 would be a feeling-out season for Blaney that saw him mostly run mid-pack, but he did have an uptick towards the end of the season, with eight top 15s in the last 13 races. His rookie campaign had three top 5s and nine top 10s, and he ended up finishing 20th in points. It was groundwork. Not groundbreaking, but groundwork for the future. So 2017 would, by thought, be the next big step for Blaney. And it was. As heading into Pocono, he's at 13th in points. The only sure way to get him into the playoffs, though, would be a win. Kyle Busch going to have to really, really oh, work huge hard. huge run off of turn three. Great run off turn three. Kyle Busch did not get off that corner. And Blaney's going oh, Whoa, oh. no. That was... How low can you go? Man, well, tell you, huge block by the 18. 18 to a big block on uh, Blaney right there. With those fresher tires, if Blaney ever gets past, oh, he's, he's got to be able to catch him. Here. He's got him. He'll get him down the back right here. He's well, going to out drag him. We, it, now watch watch Kurt, uh, Kevin Harvick. Oh, my gosh. He drove me all around the eighth. Room. Took him to the infield almost. Man. Blaney has got to be saying, what do I got to do? Oh, look at that big piece of paper. Is that covering the grill on Kyle Busch's 18? But watch Kevin Harvick. He's coming into the picture. Well, these two guys running side by side. I mean, it's going to open the door for everybody. Outside. On your door, Kyle. Oh, Blaney loose. Oh, he's driving the heck out of that thing. Still there. He's going to clear him. Clear got him. Got the lead. Blaney to the front. The 21 right. car to the lead. By one in line. Two to go. There you go. Caution. Cole Whip has brought out the caution. Not, no caution. No oh, excuse caution. me. Sorry, had a voice in my ear. No caution. We stay green. And there is Cole Whip. Get off the track. Oh, we Get out on the apron. We're Get still apron. green. Boy, this is going to be a nail biter. I, I mean, Harvick is right there. If Blaney makes one mistake, he'll get it. Been a long time for Glenn and Leonard. I love the way Glenn Harvey, and Eddie, the Wood Brothers. I, I, the Harvey plays back so nice right there. Catches that third gear and really gets a nice run across his short shoe. But so does the 21 car. Cole Witt makes it to pit road. No caution. Well, look how early Kevin Harvey can get back to the throttle. Gains on to the center. But Blaney does a nice job carrying uh, that speed off the corner. White I like flag. Him. One lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. He let Blaney really drive into the corner. Nice job off of turn one for Ryan Blaney. Gapped him a little bit. Got to get across this tunnel. If he gets across the tunnel, he's got it made. Yep. The calm voice of spotter Josh Williams Ooh, for loose, Blaney. A little loose. Here he comes. He's looking. He's looking. Oh, Harvick had to get out of the throttle a little bit. Almost got in the wall. 400 miles, it's going to come down to one corner. That flat turn three. 
And Blaney beats Harvick back to the gas. Harvick looks slow, and here they come. The winner at Pocono, Ryan Blaney for the Wood Brothers. Wow. What a race. Wow. So not only did he score his first cup win at Pocono, something that hadn't been done since Denny Hamlin did so in 2006, but he also beat out two of the best drivers in the half decade of NASCAR that he was competing in, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. But he was able to actually pass Busch and hold off Kevin Harvick. This qualified him for the 2017 playoffs, where he started out in the ninth seat. He turned this into a surprisingly strong run, and he made it to the round of eight, where he ended up finishing ninth in the final standings. Once again, this is a successful year, and it would help him lead into the 12 car again with the 2018 season. While having trouble through the regular season, he had enough points to just make it in the playoffs off consistency. This would lead into one of the highlights of Blaney's career. Here comes Jimmy Johnson, oh! locks the brakes up. He's and he's going to slide. He slides through the middle. Truex gets oh, tagged. Now it'll be a fight here. for the finish line. Ryan Blaney in the 12 will again. win. This win is both probably his luckiest and is also one of his most talent-based. Had Johnson and Truex not taken each other out, Blaney would have finished third. Still, people act like that it was all dumb luck. I mean, come on. He was sitting third at a brand new road course that no one in the series had ever driven on. So I think people should give him more credit than they do because this is actually a very talent-based win. Yeah, he had some help, but who doesn't? While this was a highlight, it didn't end up translating into playoff success as he was eliminated in the round of 12. He would finish 2018 10th in points though, with a win, eight top fives, and 16 top tens. So again, this was improvement that could be built upon for the next year as a season overall. This next year though, was 2019. Once again, Blaney would run between 9th and 12th in the regular season points for most of the season, but he quietly heated up as he approached the NASCAR playoffs. He rolled off in the 12th seat of the grid and made it past the round of 16. Then he had suspension issues at Dover, this put him in a must-win position heading to Talladega. Get another Roman Newman way out front. They're going to have a big run coming up on this six car down the front straightaway. Huge block coming right here. Blaney as they go around the 37, almost upside down. So is the 96, Parker Kligerman. Here they come. They make contact. They're side by side. It's a photo finish at the line. Blaney and Newman were side by side when they crossed the line. Blaney, by just a foot, is going to get the win over Newman. Blaney once again made it to the round of eight, and he even competed for a top five, nearly making the final four. In the end, he would end up sixth in the points, with a win, 11 top fives, and 18 top tens. Once again, career highs, and continuing his trajectory up. So 2020 was looking to be a year that Blaney could break through, especially since he was now paired with 2018 championship winning crew chief Todd Gordon. The speed was there to start the year, but by race 12, he had been in the top five in points and had six top fives in the 2020 season. He just needed a win. Blaney pokes out, Stenhouse is with him. Harvick got away from oh, Busher. Reckon. But up front, they're racing for the win. Blaney's the crash ahead. is in the back, and Blaney is the leader. Stenhouse comes back to him on the bottom. Off turn four, three wide. Not over yet. Here comes Eric Jones. Nemechek trying to push Jones. Eric Jones with help. Here comes Almirola. Crash into the wall. I think it's Stenhouse. It might be Blaney. Blaney was looking like a championship contender in the first half of the year. But since then, he's only scored one top five. He entered the playoffs in the seventh seed and dropped like a rock. He finished 24th after failing inspection at Darlington and then having a points penalty. 19th, two laps down at Richmond, and then finished off the round 13th at Bristol, two laps down once again. And this equated to a first round exit. With seven races remaining, he has a win, eight top fives and 11 top tens. He would need to have every single race be a top 10 finish for the rest of the year just to match last year. So he's had a drop back overall. With that being said, I reiterate my question. Has Blaney lived up to his potential? The answer right now is no, he has not. Well, yet. I think that overall he's ran well 
and quite consistently, but he needs to win more. Four wins in some of the best equipment is not a good formula for success overall as a career. Fellow youth driver Chase Elliott has won eight times in only three years now. Since 2017 in the same equipment, Joey Logano has won eight times, and Brad Keselowski's won 13 times. Now, I will play devil's advocate for 2020. It's been a weird year, and it's very unorthodox, so it might have thrown him for a loop or his team overall. So, I'm not going to say that it's the end of the world. Plus, his career was going nowhere but up until this year. For all we know, 2020 might just be a fluke, and it might be also a scarier window into his future. Only time's going to tell. I personally think, though, that he's going to be much better off in 2021 when stuff gets more back to normal and stable. But I want to know what you think. I'm one person with an opinion. I want to hear what you guys have to say. How has Blaney's career been so far, and has he lived up to the expectations that people have set upon him? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content like this. And until next time, have a good one. Ah, uh, all right. I see why he's been struggling this year.